Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geomorphology, physical geography and other aspects of geography as well. So in today's session on landforms, part of the geomorphology, we are going to talk about the last set of landforms in this series of landforms that we have learned till now. So in this session, we are going to learn about the coastal landforms. So what are the processes that are important? What is the wave action? What are the submerged coast, emerged coast and how this action happens and shapes up particular forms in the coastal areas. So before we go ahead, do like and subscribe to our channel if you have not already and please share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about coastal landforms in this session. So already we have learnt about other landforms that is starting from fluvial to glacial to aeolian to karst. So this is the last in the series of these landforms which is called coastal landforms and as we know this is part of the coastal geomorphology that we study in geography as well. So what we understand is those processes, now here the agent is the sea wave. So wave action becomes one of the important agents of erosion as well as deposition in these landforms. And apart from this, the nature of the coast that is important. So let's learn about the coastal landforms. So what we understand is that coastal processes are most dynamic and hence most destructive as well. So remember sea waves, tsunami, many things keep happening, they are dynamic in nature. So at one place there can be erosion in one season and deposition in other. So they are so dynamic that same place can happen erosion in one season, then there is a deposition in another season. This keeps happening. So most of the changes along the coasts are accompanied by wave action and that is the catch here. So waves are important to understand that these waves or sea waves that we know are one of the most important dynamic features. So when waves break, the water is thrown with great force onto the shore. So remember if you have gone to a sea area, to a beach area, you know this works. So waves are important and further they have important pressure force that attack the land surface or if you can say that it has an impact on the land surface, so that is important. So simultaneously, there is a great churning of sediments on the sea bottom as well. So now if you observe this particular landscape where you see that this is the water area and this is the beach area where you actually go. So what do you see? This area is of interaction but remember sediments are here as well and here as well. So this entire zone has sediments which are continuously churned by this wave action. So this is what keeps happening on the coastal areas. So that is important. Now, there are two kinds of waves that we need to understand. So what is that? One is called backwash and one is called swash. Now remember just the term, swash is basically towards the land. So if land is here, if the wave is going towards the land, it is swash wave and if it is coming back, so remember it is called backwash. So it all depends upon it has dominance of swash or backwash. What will happen? If it has more of swash, it means more of deposition is happening on the land. If it has more of backwash, then it means it is bringing out more of material from the land. So that is why it is constructive or destructive in nature. So when we say constructive waves, now remember, have a strong swash. So that is why swash effect is important here and weak backwash is important when the wave is constructive. It means it is depositing, right? But if it is destructive, what happens? Remember, erosion is greater, here deposition is greater. So it has weak swash but strong backwash. So remember swash, backwash, constructive, destructive, this is what the nature of sea waves are like. But it's not just about the nature of wave, remember it is also about the configuration of the land sea floor that is important and if the coast is advancing that is emerging seaward or it is retreating submerging landward so that is important. So many coasts are emerging it means it is towards the sea so this is called emerging coast but if it is not emerging here it is what submerging it is means it is going towards the land so it is something like this. So sea water is here and the coast is here. So it all depends upon it is emerging or submerging. So these are important things where wave action matter in formation of these coastal landforms. So nature of waves as well as nature of the coastal lands. So assuming sea level to be constant, 
two types of coasts are considered to explain in this particular evolution of coastal landforms. So one is called submerged coast and one is called emerged coast as we have seen. So submerged coast are what? High rocky coasts, low smooth and gently sloping sedimentary coasts are called emerged coast. So that is the difference. One is high and rocky which is harder that is what part of submerged coast but low smooth and gently sloping sedimentary coasts are called emerged coast so accordingly the features will be there on different coasts either it is submerged or immersed in nature so what we observe at high rocky coasts so remember that is part of the submerged coast that we see so erosional features dominate in high rocky coast so Erosional features are what features? They are eroded by the coastal waves. So the coastline appears highly indented. Now here is a catch. When it is erosional feature that will dominate, it will be indented. So suppose this is the flat coastline. Now if water is coming and it is taking away, it is eroding. So what is it doing gradually? Then it will not look like this straight line. Now it will look like something this. It will be indented. So it is like zigzag structure, it is indents everywhere, right? So this is what we understand when we say it has indented line. With extension of water into the land where glacial valleys are there, even remember in the Norwegian fjords what we observe, this indentation happening. So sea water is now intruding in these glacial valleys in the Norwegian area especially. So these are known as fjords there, remember? So these are part of the same high rocky coasts. Now along high rocky coasts, wave break with greater force. That is important and they hit those hills of the sides and, and cliffs what we see. So these cliffs recede gradually and a wave cut platform is formed. So that is the reason why these wave cut platforms are found there and wave cut terraces are also found. So let's learn further. While if you see low sedimentary coast, what happens there? Depositional feature automatically you see. So it is smooth, it has lagoons, tidal creeks. So lagoons and tidal creeks are very famous features in many parts of the world that we know. And land slopes gently into the water. So that is important. Marsh, swamp, all these features are part of that kind of coast where you have low sedimentary rocks. And bottom sediments get churned and move readily that build various bars. So various Bars that we know as barrier bars, spits, lagoons, tomolo, all those features are part of this lower sedimentary coast that is important. So now, if we look into this image, what we have learned is these erosional landforms. So what are these landforms? Remember, this dotted line is the original land surface. But what has happened gradually because of this impact, these features have been created. So this is the cliff area. Then what you see is this natural arch area, right? Gradually, this arch which was already here as well, now it has eroded. So now what has happened? Only this arch is there. So this is how arches form. Earlier it must have been like this. Now this arch is gone. So now it looks like a single pillar, a stump that we call as stack. So stack and stump are the features that we see here. So these are the important pillars. If you have played cricket, you know what is a stump. So these stump-like features, these smaller pillars, the elongated structures that are remaining part of this when this arch is eroded in these features, these are formed. Then what you see here is this wave cut platform because there is a hard rock surface here. So there are there, after this erosion, there is a formation of this wave cut platform. So cliff, terraces, caves, stacks. So remember this can create a cave as well. This is a terrace as well. This is a platform as well. All these features are part of the erosional landforms of the coastal areas. Now coming to the depositional ones. Depositional landforms due to waves First of them is beaches and dunes. These are the materials brought by the wave action, remember? And they are deposited here. So that is important here. So these are called shore deposits and beaches and dunes are the famous example here. Then in the next image that we see here is these bars as we talked about depositional features. Various shapes of these bars are there. So what are the names? Remember, if it is along the coastline, then it is called longshore current and that's why it is called longshore bar as well. But if it is at the mouth of the bay, this is a bay area, right, where water is intruding into the land, then it is called sand pit or bay mouth bar. As you see here, these are bay mouth bar and there is a smaller inlet here. That is important. But remember, if there is a barrier-like island formation of these dunes, of this silt or of this material, because this barrier is between the open ocean and the land, 
then it is called barrier island as well. So if it is a huge feature, big feature of this sand deposition, it is known as barrier island at many places. Then what we see here is if this barrier island or if this barrier deposit of this sandbar creates a divide where this water is also there between land and this, then this water is known as what you see is lagoon. So remember these are the important features, right? And then another important feature, very interesting feature is if there is a sea island and if it is connected by the mainland by this important elongated bar, this bar is called tombolo. So tombolo is like a neck structure, neck of this important sea island. So if this is the head and if it is the base, then what is the neck? This tombolo is a neck-like feature. So what we learned in the depositional features is bar, pit, tombolo with different names. So longshore bars, sand pits, lagoon formation happening, barrier island, tombolos, all these features and sea beaches are the most common features. So if you ever go to the seaside, you can observe these features for yourself. So that is important as depositional landscape or depositional landforms, especially in which case? In the coastal landforms and they hold a very high importance in coastal geomorphology. So that is important here to learn. So now when we have learned about the various aspects of coastal landforms, processes, features, now I hope you have completed the entire list of landforms from fluvial to glacial to aeolian to karst and today's coastal landforms. So if you have not watched the previous sessions in the landforms, do go to the playlist in geomorphology or physical geography on my channel and watch it. So that is important to learn in the major crux of the physical geography for any kind of examination, be it UPSC exam or maybe university exam if you are a geography student. So all my best wishes to all of you for watching these landforms and related important processes. In the lectures to come, we are going to talk about furthermore into physical geography and some more relevant aspects of geomorphology. So stay tuned, stay safe and keep watching.